Hey guys, welcome back to Small Trees. Um, today it's kind of overcast and gloomy outside and so I thought it would be a, a good day to work on uh, the tree that I dubbed last year the, the spooky tree. It's that pomegranate that was, um, it looked like a, a tree out of a horror film where uh, you know the main character might hide under it or something like that. We wanted to make it more spooky so we left it in the ground for a year. And I think we're going to leave it in the ground for another year, but um, I am going to do another sort of bonsai basics where we go back and maybe keep selecting some more branches. Um, and I'll explain what we're doing as we're going. Uh, tools I'm going to use today are normal bonsai tools. I'm going to use some of my uh, small tree chopsticks. Um, these are available on my website. They're useful for potting, for digging around the soil or if you wanted to eat with them, feel free. Um, I've also got some of my cut paste. This is uh, homemade by me, and it's also available on the website at smalltreesfarm.com. And then the other tool I'm gonna use is something that's special to me. Um, as you know, my granddad passed away last year, and um, me and my father and my uncle were going through uh, his workshop. He was a carpenter by hobby. And someone had suggested me recently on YouTube that I get a keyhole saw, which is just kind of a fine saw for fine cuts. And um, I was going to buy one, and then I found this in his workshop, which is, um, I don't know if I can get it to focus well, but this is a um, kind of a similar idea. It's a very thin blade, and if I can get a close-up really quick on the blade, you see that they only go, they only face backwards, which means you only get a cut when you pull and not when you push. So with a thin blade like that and a, a pull saw, you can get in and make really nice close cuts, um, which is really useful. So I'm gonna use it today. And um, this is kind of a keepsake. So um, I'm gonna take you out here. We're gonna look at the tree and work on, uh, like I said, maybe some branch selection. I will discuss why we're doing each thing we're doing or why we're not doing something that I choose not to do. So. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and let's get right into it. Good morning everybody. Welcome back to Small Trees. Um, this morning I thought uh, it is a foggy overcast day and I thought it would be a good day to revisit this pomegranate that I kind of dubbed the uh, spooky tree last year uh, because it's got all kinds of you know funky trunk movements and it just looks like something you might see uh, like a main character in a horror film uh, hide behind so um, I'm going to go through and we're going to do another episode of Bonsai Basics we're going to look at what we did last year and kind of see how it compared to this year as far as growth goes and then as far as the the branches that we cut see if we made good decisions and so on and so forth so um what i'm going to be doing is poking around at a little bit um, maybe making a few small cuts i do want this tree to keep growing for another year uh, i think one year and this is what we got last year i'm just going to pick up the camera really quick you see we got a lot of growth and i'm not going to mess with a lot of it so i'll as I'm making cuts, I will uh, explain why I'm doing them or why I'm leaving certain limbs that may be uh, things that we don't really want in the future. But it's things that I want right now for whatever reason, I'll explain it. So, okay, so here we have the tree. Um, and you can see it's grown a lot since last year. Um, a few things that we can notice, I'm gonna put a, um, a side by side so you can see it last year when I first worked on it, it was ugly as sin and we have improved it about 200 percent so um i don't have a way to get my camera much lower i'd like to have you view it from down here a little bit but we're, we're gonna make do with this so a few things that we'll go through really quickly um as an update on the base here um, last year we had one of my chopsticks to use we had um roots that were all over the place we had them coming out here like way out this way almost on every side it was just it was really really ugly um, and we went through and we cut most of those roots and those chops have already mostly healed there is a 
um, hollow on the, the side that I'll try to get you a, a shot of in a minute. This uh, root here was, was pretty thin and it was higher than the others. So I'd planned on uh, leaving it because I thought this branch may die if I cut it and I was hoping it would root under and then I'd remove this branch this year, but it grew so much that it now really looks like it's part of the, the base properly. So we're gonna leave it. Um, and as a side note, I'm gonna poke around under here. There are a lot of roots up under there. I could probably cut it if I wanted to, but at this point, I think it looks nice. Even if we planted it um, in a pot as at this ground level, that is um, a nice little hollow that you can see that adds a little bit of visual interest. So, um, pardon me, I'm gonna move the camera, show you this hollow on the back side. I'm gonna have to dodge all of the thorns. This is a pomegranate tree, if you did not know, and they issue thorns all over the place. So, if I can get a little, I'm gonna have to squeeze the camera in here a little bit. I may even have to turn it sideways, but I'm sorry. Um, here is, we had roots here, here, here. I know, roots here and here that we, um, oh, you can't see. I'm sorry. Roots here and here, and uh, maybe a branch here that we removed. And they have almost completely healed. I'm gonna do this just so you can see. Um, but they're gonna form a nice hollow section. Three little spots like this, especially right in here, will be a nice hollow after it fully heals. You can see the, um, the nabari is nice and twisting along with the trunk. And what we have, I'm gonna turn your back up the right way now. What we have is the twisting is already beginning in this tree. And this is the, the characteristic why I love it so much. Um, you've got roots that run up the tree and you get the little twists forming. And I wanna leave this in the ground one more year because that will become even more defined um, with one more year growth. So apologize for the camera. But I'd have to move around a little bit and this tree's very um, wide. It's not super tall, but it's very wide and it has thorns that catch on everything. So, um, I'll get you back in here. And last year, like I said, when we were trying to decide what to keep and what to remove for roots, I left this one, like I said, because I wanted to keep this branch, um, if nothing else, to help thicken the base a little bit. And you could kind of see, in the same way that this twists, you could kind of see that this root tied into that branch. And so I figured that if I cut this root, that branch might also die, so I left it. And I am glad that I did. Um, the back side, I will try to get a, a shot of later. Uh, I can't really get in there very easily right now, but I'll, I'll get a shot of it later. It's um, progressing along the same way. So other things that we did, we started to go through the tree and remove um, crossing branches. So this tree kind of um, is gonna be a unique shape anyway, um, but you still in general want to remove um, crossing branches. So if, for example, where you're viewing right now is the front of the tree, um, you can see that this, first off, this comes from the inside of this trunk, which isn't good, but it also, comes up and across and blocks the view of the trunk. Um, in most cases, you want that gone. Sometimes you can use a flaw like that to cover up um, if there's an issue with the trunk itself. In that spot, you could use a branch like this to, to disguise it, right, with the foliage. So that's a technique, but in this case, we don't have that. Um, so I'm gonna go through and remove branches that are crossing. I'm gonna remove branches like this one, this little one, that are just, this is coming from the crook here and has no, no purpose whatsoever. Um, I'm going to leave, um, if you can see in the back, right here, there's a pretty good scar. Um, but you can see that it started to callus over. And while this branch is pretty straight and lacks much interest, I'm going to let it grow for another year and hope that this almost completely covers up. At which point, I will probably cut it back um, maybe next year, sometime closer up here uh, because these trees 
do bud back very well and they respond to cut back very well so i'll cut it back a lot closer to the trunk and then you won't have this very long straight branch section that you can see um if i can get you a, a shot of it oh, excuse me please don't fall over camera there we go so this very long straight branch section right here we'll try to cut it way back and let it start um becoming the main first branch right so what i'm gonna do right now is start taking the first looks at the tree and i'm gonna walk you through uh, what i'm cutting and what i'm keeping and why and i'm gonna stay zoomed in just a little bit because if i zoom out you won't be able to see quite exactly what i'm doing very well um and i'll probably work from the bottom upwards so one thing before i do start right here you can see i marked in the other video where i thought i might cut um to start the the next trunk section this year it's still there with a little red marker which is nice to know i didn't think it would last all year but it did so at this point i'm not going to do that because I, like i said i do want to let this thing grow a lot this year and hopefully at the end of the year we end up with a, a really twisted curved um funky tree 